Hello, Jim here, scuba diver and instructor from Japan. Thanks for joining the channel. Today, I'm going to look at a scuba diving incident that was referred to me by a fan of the channel, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. This one, if you're a scuba diver, you might have seen this one out there. I actually hadn't seen the whole video before today. Once again, if you're this diver or anyone involved, this is just an analysis of the video to learn what could be learned and to make diving safer for other divers. So no, no ill intent meant about any of the divers in this. Let's go to the videotape. All right, now the background to this dive, apparently this is 2015, January, and it was in Cape Town. The person who originally, I think, there's several versions of this out there. The person who originally posted the version said that they were not, they're not an instructor, or I guess they're saying they're not a dive pro, and I guess this camera was just uh, attached to their head. Now, immediately what I'm seeing here, um, I'm seeing this diver on the right, now you're going to notice this when I start the video up again. This video, this uh, diver on the right is distracted. You can see that the, uh, it's a she, that she is not as comfortable and she's not paying as much attention to the other divers. I recently posted something about rescue. Was rescue your turning point? And one of the things that rescue does, most people posted, it takes your attention from you, your skills, your ability, and puts it out and you're looking around to head off other problems. As a dive leader, 99% of what I do, I'm trying to prevent problems and then solve problems. Hopefully the second category is less. And what I would be doing in this case, as a dive leader, always looking around at, at your herd, and I'd be noticing immediately that this diver um, is not as attentive. And what you'll see is when the, the dive leader or the person thumbing the dive uh, motions her, you'll notice that she does not respond like the other divers. Check this out. All right, so first, boy, pretty green water. Huh? I get that occasionally. Any of you get that out there? Now watch, she's going to go around uh, signaling thumbs the dive. Let's go up. And normally, as you know, uh, you should repeat that gesture back to show that you understood and you agree with it. Now, notice that the diver who's going to panic doesn't even seem to recognize this gesture. That should have been one of the first uh, warning signals. Thumbs up. Now here, look at this, right? So he's giving the thumbs up and the one buddy who's in good trim uh, is is going to signal back. But look at the, the diver on the right, okay? Totally not looking at the, the signal. Now for, if this person filming here, I don't know if they're a dive leader or not, but if they are, this should have been a, a big signal. So that signal should have been received by this diver and acknowledged and repeated back. So. A little bit, I'm not saying anybody's culpable here, but a little bit of uh, this person should not have started surfacing if that person hadn't seen the signal to surface and recognized it and agreed. So this person giving the signal, if they're the dive leader, the dive organizer, or organizer, whatever they are, right here is where they should have seen a problem starting. Let's start. Right, so that, that buddy acknowledged, the other buddy did not even look up. Okay, and it just moves on and starts the ascent. So here's where the problem starts, right? Now, as the, the group ascends, you're gonna see that the other two are left down behind. And the one diver becomes, you see the bottom right, okay, right there, becomes increasingly agitated. Now watch how the hands are going. That's the, the telltale classical signal. Right, look at that, probably the panic breathing, looking uh, the, the person moving back and forth, right, with, with the breathing effort. This is really painful to watch. This person must have been experiencing a, a tremendous amount of, of stress. Now, uh, the video description says that this happened at 15 meters. So I'll guess that that's where, sorry. Whoa, 15, the woman accidentally spits its spits her regular and gives a panic attack at 15 meters deep. Well, that's actually quite deep. I thought it was 15 feet. This is 15 meters. That's pretty significant. Let me let me rewind this back a little bit. So she is gonna panic bolt from this depth. Um, and boy, boy, is that terrible. Hold on, here we go. Oh man. Right, so she, she, 
he jettisons the mask and spits the rag. So we're saying, you know, 12, 15, 12 meters deep. Now, I've never had this particular thing happen to me. And here's where I'm very interested in other dive leaders and instructors out there. I'm very interested in hearing your experience, okay? Now, apparently, we can't look well, but apparently this dive leader or whatever this person's position is, this, this person who has the camera probably latched onto her and you can see he's trying or she is trying to donate his or her reg, uh, getting it into that that panic person's mouth, which is the exact correct thing. So all we can imagine, person spits the reg. Obviously, they're going to be holding their breath. They're trying to get to the surface from 15 meters. You can just about guarantee this person would explode, right? That they would have a lung overexpansion injury. So your only hope is to get a regulator in and get some breathing going. Now, really unfortunately, if the person's bigger than you, uh, just stronger adrenaline panic, and if you can't stop it, you know, there might be nothing you could do uh, You know, in this case. Uh, she's relatively small, so it looks like maybe the, the person with the camera is able to significantly slow her down. It doesn't look like he ever effectively gets this regulator in her mouth. Let's have a look. Doesn't look like it. Spitting it. I can't see. Now I lost the bubble up. Oh. Okay, I couldn't I couldn't tell if the regulator was in was in her mouth when when she got to the surface, so I could tell. But Clearly, uh, from my understanding, this, this person did not suffer a serious injury, so there was not a lung overexpansion injury, so either she was exhaling or she was breathing the regulator on that way up. So my question out there to the instructors, you know, whether you've encountered this or not, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on this. So, uh, you know, obviously you're gonna try to slow the person down. You know, I've heard leg wrapping is, is a good thing to do, you know, spreading yourself out and uh, you know, trying to get that regulator in there, purging it. Um, you know, what, what has been your experience with this? Because you know, if a person really does not want that rig, they've got that mask off. That's as pretty much full-blown panic as I could possibly imagine. So what, what has been your experience out there? Let's, let's have a look at that ascent just again. See if I can see if that regulator gets in there. I should try to rip the hood off. Yeah, I can't see from here. Oh, looks like it might have been in her mouth. Now I can't tell. Hmm. I just can't see. Yeah, I just can't see. In retrospect, maybe her mask was flooding or something like that. She never acknowledged the, the thumbs up. So that was the first that was the first thing that was a problem. Because she didn't acknowledge it, she might not have known the other people were going up. Everybody kind of left her and her buddy there. And then she reached her maximum level of discomfort and just kind of uh, went full full panic. If you're a person who, who's getting to the point of rescue, you know, what you're going to do is look for the early signals. Now this this person did have uh, an early signal. As a dive leader, I'm always scanning my flock. And I'm always just looking for those hints of someone who might be experiencing some discomfort. That's usually how it starts. Also, if you're a person who's being involved in a rescue class, if you're volunteering to be a victim, this is the way I do it, right? So I'll, if I'm going to act, act up, I don't usually just explode. What I'll do is I'll, I'll build it up like this, maybe, you know, making believe I can't, uh, clear my mask a couple times and then pop my mask off and, and go nutty. Uh, I try and give the rescue candidate a chance to see a, a symptom evolving and to head that off. So the, these are 
some some acting skills when when you're doing your rescue. These are the kinds of things you want to take into uh, advance. Some kind of an escalating issue, like like she was having. Give me your feedback. You know, if you've had this happen, or you know about the success of getting the regulator in um, on the way up. Uh, anything that you have to offer about this. Uh, it's been really good discussion on these videos, and and I thank everybody for that. So thank you very much, and I'll see you next time on the beach. Cheers.